All right. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about Locke's political philosophy. <clears throat> so um, according to John Locke, um, we have all of these rights. And, and so a lot of Locke's political philosophy influences American government and just like constitutional governments kind of across the board. So we're going to be looking at the, his picture kind of in a lot of detail. So um, in two treatises of government, Locke wants to ask, what is it that justifies the power of the state? Okay, and so the state here is understood as the government, right? So what, why does the government or, or the governing body have all of this power, right? And, and why is it that they should have all that power? So um, Locke is sort of writing in opposition uh, to and within the context of uh, mon monarchies. So according to monarchism, what is it that, that justifies the power of the crown is uh, God, right? So um, the king or queen in virtue of, of being a part of the lineage, right? Uh, in virtue of, of, of being a biologically sort of in the line of, uh, that's what makes someone, or that's what justifies someone having power over their subjects, right? So this is what we call the divine right of kings. And so Locke disagrees. Locke wants to say, look, that's like, that's not what justifies uh, uh, authority or, or justifies the power of the government, right? Uh, he wants to say rather that like, it's, it's the people, right? Um, and, and there ought to be like systems that express the, the, the wishes of the people. Okay, so to justify this conclusion, Locke invites us to uh, uh, think of, of a thought experiment, right? So this is called the state of nature. The state of nature is frequently cited um, by other social contract theorists um, uh, Locke is just one of the many people who are working in this tradition. So um, people like Hobbes and Rousseau, those are others that use this thought experiment to derive various conclusions about government. So let's imagine a time before there was any government, um, but also a time where there were people, right? So what is that what is that kind of life or what, what is that kind of situation like, we might ask, right? So we might, we might wonder like, oh, is there a technology? Is there all these sort of things? Like, well, maybe that doesn't really matter. But what is it that human beings are like in this, in this kind of scenario, right? Uh, so according to Hobbes, right, Thomas Hobbes, he says that life in the state of nature is uh, very brutish and very short, right? And so because people are just going to be killing each other whenever they need something from one another and people who are like the biggest and the strongest are going to be like the, 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 uh, the most powerful and the most dominant, right? And so it's really a horrible uh, state of affairs. Now, according to Locke, um, it's not quite that bad. It's, it's, it's still bad, right? But it's not quite that bad. So uh, Locke wants to say that in the state of nature, we have limitless rights. We have rights to all sorts of things. I have a right to kill you. You have a right to kill me. Uh, we just have boundless rights. Okay, but, and, and so you might be thinking, well, that sounds pretty bad, right? Like if, if you have a right to kill me, what keeps you from killing me? But so Locke wants to say that, look, in the state of nature, we have the rule of reason, right? People. Uh, uh, people in the state of nature aren't just like these animals that are just like destroying everything. Rather, they, they are governed by reason itself, right? Such that like what they, what they do uh, is justified by reason. Like what they do is not just uh, 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 illogical, right? Or, or something that, that's totally bad. Rather, they act in accordance with reason. Okay. So we have this state of affairs. There's no government, and we have all of these people with limitless rights who are like governed by reason to some degree. Okay, so like, 
what's life look like in that kind of scenario? Okay, so um, Locke wants to say, uh, he talks a lot about property rights in the state of nature, right? So the idea, like how you make something your property, according to Locke, is that you mix your labor with that thing, right? Okay, what the heck does that mean? Okay, suppose I want a house, right? Uh, and so I start cutting down, it's the state of nature, start cutting down a bunch of trees and I build a house. And somebody comes along and says, no, that's my house. According to Locke, I could, I could cite the fact that I worked on that house as evidence that it is my house. And I'd say, no, look, guy, this is my house. It's not your house because you didn't do any work on it, right? So Locke wants to say that you accumulate property in virtue of mixing your labor or in virtue of your work, right? Okay. So like the example that he gives is an apple, um, merely by picking up the apple off the ground and biting into it, that justifies it being your apple. It was nobody's apple in the state of nature. You pick it up and you start eating it. It's your apple from there on out. That, that just picking it up is labor sufficient enough to, to justify you eating it, right? Uh, other interesting things that Locke says, Locke says that you can't hoard anything in the state of nature, right? So, so for instance, suppose I pick up all of the apples and I put them in a huge basket on my back, like more apples than I could ever eat. And there are all these people who are like, where are the apples? Like we want apples too. According to Locke, I would not be justified in holding all of the apples. And that's because uh, you have to you can't let things go to waste. You cannot let your property go to waste, according to Locke. Um, so I, I'm only justified in holding as many apples as I can eat before they start to rot away. Okay. So, um, so Locke has to get us out of the nature, uh, out of the state of nature somehow. So things aren't perfect in the state of nature. Um, things are still problematic. It seems pretty good. You look at it, it, it seems pretty good. Look, you have people who are governed by reason. They have all of these different property rights and they have all of these individual rights. Like, why do we even need a government? Locke wants to say three things that we need to, that's what, that, that we need to get out of the state of nature. He says that we need a common law that we can all know and we can agree to, Right. So if every, every person or ev every man, as he says, has their own law of reason or has the law of reason, we might sometimes disagree about what, what the actual law of reason is. And, and so we'll end up speculating about what's right or wrong uh, in the state of nature. And so it seems like if everybody's their own authority, right, then, then how do we parse out disagreement about things like what is the law? So what we need is a document or, or something to say, no, this is what the law is and it applies to everybody, right? So that way there's not as much disagreement about, uh, about the law, uh, at least among the citizens of a populace. Second, we, we need impartial judges to rule in cases of conflict, right? So if I'm in the state of nature and you're in the state of nature and, and we have like a, a property dispute, right? Maybe, maybe your dog comes into my uh, um, garden, right? And we're arguing about it, right? We, we need a, both of us, you love your dog, I like my garden. And so I'm going to be biased and, and try to get you to get your dog away from my garden. And you're going to be biased that like maybe your dog has a right to go into my garden, right? So you and I, we both have these biases. So when we're trying to figure out uh, how we're going to rule in this case of conflict, we're both going to be representing our own interests in ways that, that make us partial to ourselves or to our loved ones too. So... What we need is an impartial judge to, to rule in cases of conflict, right? Somebody who doesn't have any interest in either my garden or your dog, right? And who can just rule in one way or the other, right? Without having any biases. 
So we get that with government, according to Locke. Uh, the last thing that that uh, that Locke wants to identify that we need uh, to get out of the state of nature is that we need the power to to back up punishments, right? So according to Locke, if we're in the state of nature, I have the right to punish you if you do something wrong, right? If you violate the uh, the law of reason. So, so uh, I have the authority to do so. However, I may not be powerful enough, right? You might be uh, like an eight foot tall uh, person who could really kick my ass. Uh, and, and, but if you do something wrong, I have to punish you, right? But if you can overpower me very easily, well, then uh, uh, <laughs> that means that the punishment can't be enacted. So what we need is, according to Locke, we need an entity that is more powerful than everybody else that can very easily back up our punishments, right? That can, uh, that, that has the power to overthrow those who are more powerful in the society or in the uh, populace, right? To, um, in order to punish them when they do wrong, right? So these are the three things that Locke thinks that we need uh, to get out of the state of government or to, to the, out from the state of nature, that is. Okay, so we need, so we know what the state of nature is. We know how some of the rights work, right? And, and we, we know that the state of nature isn't perfect, right? We know that we, we, we have some reason to get out of it. So how do we get out of the state of nature? According to Locke, we, we get all the people together and we write up a contract, right? And we, so what we do is we, we make an agreement to give up different rights and we give up our rights to an impartial body, right, of government, right? We have, we create what, what's a, a constitution. So I say, hey, look, I'm not going to kill you so long as you don't kill me. And you're like, oh, great. That sounds really good. That's in my self-interest. So both of us give up our, uh, our right to kill one another. And then we write that down on a, on a piece of paper. And that piece of paper is our like guiding document, our constitutional uh, or our constitution. And, uh, and so it dictates what uh, uh, is, is permissible, right? And then we act uh, in, in ways that are consistent with that document. And so um, in virtue of creating that document, we relinquish a whole lot of different rights to the state, right? The right to punish, right? The, the right to uh, kill other people. We relinquish, relinquish all of those things to the state. And now we have a common law that we can all act in accordance with. So according to Locke, what justifies government is not divine right, right? But rather it's, it's an agreement. It's the contract, it's the social contract, and it's in virtue of the social contract that we get out of the state of nature.